The clock is ticking as the gang heads to Castle Darkmoor. Let's hope they can steal the show. Dandy Minus. You enter Darkmoor under the cover of Darkness. <laughs> Thank you. He Dark just less, did, Ness, he did, more, <laughs> Dark. He did wordplay, guys. Thank you. It was like word floundering, yeah, but sure. Snark. <laughs> Flark. Go ahead. More like narc more. Blades contacts in the underworld smuggle you past checkpoints and guards in the secret compartment of wagons, underneath piles of supplies, and once or twice inside a barrel or two. But eventually, you find yourself at the hamlet just outside of Castle Darkmoor. Sorry, you said a barrel or two, which suggests that sometimes it was fewer than two barrels. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Sometimes you were all, all in one us, barrel together. We are hobbits. Okay, yeah. all right. Hell of a Cooper. Literally none of us are hobbits. You got to listen to the episode <laughs> that Heath DM'd to find out how we fit all of you into <laughs> one barrel. All right. But eventually, you find yourself at the hamlet just outside of Castle Darkmoor a small village of no more than a hundred straw and wooden cottages home to the servants and serfs of the Darkmoor family. Only one cottage has its lights on. Dave's childhood home. You sneak through the freezing rain to the door, which has a large sign over the front that says, The Pig Shits. Yeah, okay, go ahead. My last name was Pig Shits for like 18 years. Let's everybody get it out. Let's everybody get it out. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, I think I'll hang on to it. I feel like Claw's <laughs> going to not take the bait on that. Nope. <laughs> to be fair, I was like cocksucker or whatever. So, I mean, you know, same boat, right? <laughs> I'm just glad that Eli came up with this bit after we visited my hometown. <laughs> <laughs> I, me too. What's that? A message comes from Snedrick's father. <laughs> Here's your birth certificate. <laughs> Snedrick, the Jews started all the wars first. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so that's it. Nobody's going to do any more. That's it. We're not. We're just. No, no, no. We'll do it. People are saving it. We're, there's no saving it. Saving it. Saving it. No, go for it, pig shits. Okay. From the New Hampshire pig shits. It's actually really good <laughs> fertilizer for. It doesn't matter. We're going into the. We're going into my old house. Let's go into my old house. All right. You have barely placed your knuckles to the door when it is hurled open by one of the largest humans you have ever seen. And even though he wears the ratty garb of a peasant, he looks more like a prince than a pauper. He has a chiseled jaw and long blonde hair that flows effortlessly to his broad shoulders. Next to him stands a stunningly beautiful human woman. Her hair is also blonde, and though she's now in middle age, it's done nothing to dull her beauty. That said, you can barely take these two humans in because of how distracted you are by their home. Every surface, every wall, every end table of this mud hut is covered in pig shit. <laughs> no, it's covered in framed sketches of a blonde haired boy with oddly familiar features. There are pictures of him as a child, as an adolescent, a teenager, and quite a few of him hoisting trophies for a blunderbuss based sporting competition that none of you recognize. The trophies cobbled together from scrap wood and bits of brass also adorn the walls and surfaces, as well as cramming a makeshift trophy case in the corner. And as you're gawking, the man speaks, Honey, the champ is back. And he scoops <laughs> all of you inside with one broad arm. Instantly, without noticing you at all, the two humans begin fawning and peppering Dave with questions, ooing and eyeing at the magical items that hang from his person, hardly noticing the rest of you at all. Well, tell us about your adventures. It's about time you came for a visit. On and on and on. So do you uh, two want to just go and finish the adventure when we can uh, come back later? 
I, f- I feel like we, we should at least stay here long enough to wring something out of that pig shit material. I mean, that was on a tee. <laughs> and possibly steal a trophy. Yeah. I don't know if those are real. You can't steal it. It's, that's false valor. You have to actually win the Blunderbuss tournament. <laughs> What's like the lamest trophy that we can see? <laughs> they're, they're all first place. There's no lame ones. I won everything. How? Right, Dad? Right? Right? He sure did. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> and he turns to you now that he's speaking to you. And he says, my goodness, where are my manners? I'm Masterson Pigshit. Named for patron Josh Masterson. Thank you. Pig and shit. apologies <laughs> to Josh. And of course, his mom speaks up and says, I'm Lisa Pigshit, named for patron Lisa Drury. Thank you and apologies to Lisa. Just, you know what? It's a lottery when I name people after patrons. And she welcomes you to her home and she says, thank you. Thank you so much for bringing our champion back to us. Yeah, I mean, we've been trying to get rid of him for a while. This is a <laughs> question. How does one do precision shooting? With a blunderbuss. Dave's dad like laughs and he's like, <laughs> I bet our son has been showing you quite a bit about his blunderbuss abilities. Am I right? Sure have, dad. Sure have. <laughs> yep. I've been crushing it. First place every year he ever competed. You know, it's crazy because the one tournament that we've been in, I actually won first place. And I believe Dave didn't. Oh, was that a blunderbuss tournament? Was there a shooting a blunderbuss involved? <laughs> I think you did shoot a blunderbuss. I mean, we were on a team, man. We all won. We all won together. I... No, nah, I think I won. Or did you just like only fall into the water two times <laughs> instead of three and somehow get lucky at the end? <laughs> did you fire your blunderbuss during that? I don't even remember. I don't think I remember him ever firing the fucking blunderbuss. What? As you all are discussing who won the shattering many and times. blunderbuss activities, a bell rings from the back of the cottage and Dave's mom perks up and she goes, oh, Bread's ready. Can I interest anybody? I never tell the boys what I'm making. My bread is always a surprise. Oh, I I love surprise bread. Yes. It's a surprise for us as well. She pulls out and hands around these like little um, Dover rolls. Like everyone gets a Dover roll. Ooh, what's a Dover roll? Yeah, what's a Dover roll? Maybe I'm making (laughs) <laughs> a Dover roll. Well, over at Um and Um Brewing's Dover roll. <laughs> mom, mom, you want to see this thing I have? Yeah, I can. Yeah. I can summon bread from my robe. Uh, you want me? To, no. You want me to do it right now? What? I mean, she just summoned bread from the oven. I feel like you're kind of one up in your mom, right? Well, it, it often turns out very badly. A bit of a story topper. <laughs> Just like the champion, always one-upping everyone else. You can't keep this kid back. You cannot keep this kid back. (laughs) That's true. Oh, I know. That's true. Actually, you know what? Bust that thing out now, and then you won't be able to do it during battle later. So that'll be good. We'll take a long rest after this. Yeah. Uh, Go ahead, and I'm going to summon some bread. (laughs) Yeah. No, that's on me for not having it ready. How did you, you, you had her you, creating you had bread her, and yeah. I wasn't going to summon I, bread? I figured another person creating bread. It's just stupid. <laughs> it's stupid. And now that I say it, I'm full of shame. You just said he ones up everybody. One yeah. ups everybody. No, no, no one to blame but myself. I just hear words and I'm like, bread, bread. <laughs> you know true. that. The main question is how many ass wolves are we going to summon right now? And <laughs> just fill their cottage with wolves. <laughs> All right. Roll a, roll a D100. D. One hundo. Got it. Wow, it's happening really slowly. Why does it do that? Oh, to turn uh, off somebody the, told me how to fix this. I have yeah, to like get rid of the hardware acceleration. But because we're like two months ahead, now whenever an episode comes out, like there's always the first couple of like, oh, I'm so glad to see this. But then all the rest of the comments are, oh my god, you have to turn off the automatic. <laughs> I will come to Heath. Give me Heath's address. I will come there right now. Did you say Dover Roll? I did say Dover roll. I am literally Googling it because you, you obviously Dover forgot roll? to. I feel like and you made legitimately that up. nothing is coming Not a lot out. of people like, know I'm about it. Sure. It's a secret roll. <laughs> but it's a good one. It's garbage bags in Brazil. That's what I got. <laughs> Were you talking about one of those cheese rolls from Red Lobster? No. <laughs> no. I was talking about what are those fancy rolls? The cheese rolls from Dover. Buddy. Hello. <laughs> are you talking about Martin's potato rolls? Are you talking about like Cinnamon rolls? No, you know the nice ones. They're like Hawaiian a rolls? perfect circle, kind of <laughs> like those. They're named after a hotel. And Dover is the first thing that came. The Waldorf Astoria <laughs> rolls. Waldorf rolls? 
Parker House Rolls. I was thinking of Parker House Rolls. Parker House Rolls. You got Dover. How the hell did you get? How did you get? Where's the Parker House? I mean, there's an er. There's an er in it, I guess. Yeah, exactly. Parker House Roll. Well, now I don't. I got to figure out what a Parker House Roll. Yeah, no, it's okay. I got it. A Parker House Roll is a bread roll made by flattening the center of a ball of dough with a rolling pin. That is a Hawaiian roll, man. That's just so that it. Becomes an oval shape. And they're definitely not circles. No. <laughs> and then folding the oval in half. It's neither here nor there. I don't think that's what you were thinking of. So it's like, it's buttery, milky. It's it's, it's enriched dough. Exactly. What did you roll on your bread summoning table, Dan? Okay, well, I feel like the 78 I rolled has a really good shot of being better than this bullshit roll. Okay. Well, <laughs> first of all, your mom made it. Um, yeah. But you are right. You, you produce a... Jalapeno loaf with melted Ooh. cheddar on top. Oh, yeah. so good. I gotta be honest. Uh, how often do you wash that coat? There's gonna be melted cheddar in there. <laughs> Why would I wash away the cheese? That's dumb. Yeah, that's dumb. <laughs> Thank you, mom. Right? She's so dumb. I, I will not be. I, your friend is. <laughs> <laughs> I will not be eating any more of your bread robe bread. Great. Yeah, but Dave's parents immediately dive into the role and they can't stop complimenting oh my god this is so <laughs> honey you should be a baker at the castle i'm telling you I son this it. is the best role ever and you know right? your mother's a master baker but this i know she is this is fantastic thank you you know he didn't bake it right <laughs> <laughs> okay well if he didn't bake it then where did it come from exactly it has melted cheese on it. does that's how good a baker he is i can bake cheese wow <laughs> so what uh brings you all to town we know that you were coming so what should I call it? How'd you know we were coming? Oh, uh, Blade sent us a bird and said that our son was coming home, which, as you can imagine, we were pretty excited about. We haven't seen this kid since, uh, well, you know, we, we haven't seen this kid in a while, so we, we couldn't wait to see him. You didn't tell anybody we were coming, right? Oh, no, no. The uh, Lord of the Castle, Crest Darkmore, he's had a price out on, on Dave's head since the incident, so we, we, we kept things under wraps. How much? I... I- <laughs> don't do not do that. Cress is a dick, by the way. He's such a dick. Yeah, he is a dick. His name's Cress. Honey, don't talk about your brother like that. He's the family. <laughs> He's not my brother. He's technically your brother. Mm. About that, I don't suppose anybody's seen the inside of this place recently in that case. Or did you just put up all the decorations for our benefit? Oh, no. Our cottage has always been like this. I mean, no one would ever bother us about Dave or anything like that. I mean, they, they, we're servants at the castle. <laughs> no one cares who we are or what we do. Yeah. Oh, right. Right. They don't know about that. Of course. Of course. They yeah. What do you guys do at the castle? Oh, let's see. I work with the guards, although there have been some rearrangements done in that section recently, but I'm still working there. Still working there, just in a different position. And my wife is the master baker. She was the Always been the master baker over at the palace. So she works in the kitchens and also with the servants there. It's true. I do. I work with the servants over there. All right. What was the rearrangement was with the guards? What's going on? Oh, um, I think it might be better to show you than describe it to you. But we're getting ahead of ourselves because uh, I doubt you all want to go to the castle. That's uh, that's where all the guards are. And like I said, there's a, a price out for all of your heads. Lord Cress, he got a visitor. Yesterday, big squiggly fella with tentacles. Oh. Looked like someone had absolutely worked hell on him. <laughs> that was us. Nice. Oh, we did that. that's my boy. <laughs> right? That's me. Well, it was actually mostly. Yeah, it was mostly everybody else. Me and Claw. <laughs> I, Dave was uh, stunned for a lot of it. I, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he wasn't a falcon, so it was better than air. Yeah, yeah. He might have killed one of us with the blunder. We bus. all <laughs> won. We all won. <laughs> I, he almost... Blew us all up at one point, I remember. Mm, blew you up with his motivational skills. I get exactly. it. I used to see him on the blunderbuss field. <laughs> Technically, yes. Yeah. Just look at all my trophies. Yep, each and every one of them. So motivated, that one. Yep, absolutely. So you probably don't want to go to the castle. Um, I don't know what you're in town for. I just know that you were coming and that you snuck in. So can I help you all with something? Just visiting. I can take you through the trophies. We want to go to the castle. You sorry, what now? We want to go to the castle. I, I believe. Why do you want to go to the castle? Oh, the, the, whatchamacallit? Sunstone. Aye. What's that? 
Right? Right? <laughs> <laughs> Something that our squiggly friend has. I'm going to try and swipe one of the trophies. <laughs> Whatever one is closest to me. Okay, cool. Make a sleight of hand check. Dad, the bird's trying to steal a trophy. 10 plus four. No, I feel like th like this guy didn't even notice that we were there for like three sentences worth of conversation. <laughs> I feel like he gets advantage on this or something. I, That's I fair. So yeah. Too. yeah, he doesn't notice that you've stolen a small trophy off the shelf. Which one is it? Uh, it's just, they're all the same shape. They're like a small wood and there's like a little piece of brass that's been molded into like a slight resemblance of a blunderbuss. I kind of walk up to Dave and I'm like, hey, Dave. Are all of these the exact same shape? No. And size? No. Are you sure? This is a wide variety. Did you actually win different things or yeah, were they all, all just things. the exact same trophy? Okay. So many different. Yep. I'm going to keep this. Lot. Nope. Is, is that okay? No, no, absolutely not. I'm going to steal Dad, the second one if you say no. Mom. <laughs> mom. Honey, got to share your trophies with your friends if your friends want to steal what your trophies. I, <laughs> you have enough. You have so many trophies, honey. You just win it next year. Just win it. You always do this. No, do I ever tell you to share? You're embarrassing me in front of Okay. I hate you. If one were to try to sneak into the castle, how might one do that, do you think? Hmm. Well, I'd say there's a couple options. If you had a way of disguising yourselves. You could bake us into some bread. Right? That's <laughs> pinning that. <laughs> if you had a way of disguising yourselves, I could say you're new peasants working in the kitchens with me. Servants in the palace can go almost anywhere. Servants' clothes make it easier to blend in and sneak around, but you'd have to give up your weapons and armor, so if you were caught, you'd have a tough time handling the guards with just the four of you. Aye. All right, how about this option? We all, believe it or not, fit into a single barrel. <laughs> <laughs> That's impressive. <gasps> a surprise cake. What, what about if we all... <laughs> Got into a giant cake. Hell yeah. Somebody's got to be having a birthday in a big old castle like that. Aye. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or, says Dave's dad, they could apply to be guards with me. I mean, it's a built-in disguise. You could keep your weapons and your armor. Plus, you stand a much better chance in a fight. But guards aren't allowed everywhere in the castle, so it'd be a lot harder for you to sneak around. Mm. And, of course, you could do neither of those options and just... Bake yourselves into a cake. I'm not sure why you do that, but it's an option. You make the cake first, and then you hollow it out. You climb and you in. you get yeah. in, and you put the top back on. Like a stripper. Aye. I feel like he's just not really letting us have this, this cake idea. <laughs> I think it's a good one. You think I won't let you bake yourself into a cake? This is a comedy <laughs> podcast, my friends. <laughs> I got nothing but time. <laughs> well... I feel like the ones of us with a bunch of magic could be servants and the ones of us who need a bunch of weapons and blunderbusses and whatnot mm -hmm. could be guards. You know, that might be a good idea. It's funny that the that you said blunderbusses and stuff because Dave's a fucking magician. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, sorry. Do the guards carry blunderbusses? Right, about the guards. So the Dark Moors, for years now, they've had a very special set of guards working at the castle. They're called Zaphods. <laughs> they've only started doing this since Lord Crest took over. I, I won't go into too much detail, but the process makes you almost undefeatable. If you could Zaphod yourselves, they'd never see you coming because you'd literally be a different person or people. So, what do you think? What? Should we dress up like like a horse costume with multiple people to make a Zaphod? What are you describing? Yeah, that's pretty much what it is. Yeah. Let's not think too much about the logistics here. It's like climbing up the guy's asshole, you know. Really. It doesn't work if you really think about the physics of this thing. If you guys would like to see it in action, I can take you to the guardhouse and show you. Would they recognize us? If I walk you in, I don't think every guard in the place would recognize you. Plus, I'm, I'm friends with the head of the guardhouse, so I could probably get you guys in as you are. And um, okay. after you got Zaphoded, if that's what you want to do, then uh, no one would be able to recognize you for other reasons. You know what? Why don't I just take you down and show you? Okay. Okay. But first, why don't we sit down and eat, huh? Nice. Sure. I mean, I'm all full on bread. So. <laughs> <laughs> the next morning, Dave's dad brings you by the recruitment center that stands just down the road from the castle's front gates. It's made of cold stone and has a bolted wooden door. 
You knock on the front and the eye slit opens to reveal a set of beady eyes. Masterson, is that you? You're late. We're going to miss the second half of our shift. And Dave's dad says, yeah, sorry about that. There's um, there's some new folks in town. And I, I told them we were hiring. They, they were interested in seeing the uh, Zephotification process. I see. Well, come on in. Let's get a look at them. And as you enter, you find the guard at the door is a large man about the size of Dave's dad. Mm, he says, I'm Wes, named for patron Wes Brandt. Thank you, Wes. Do you all know how this works or do you need someone to show you? I don't know how that works. No. All right. All right. Well, obviously, a family as powerful and under threat as the Dark Moors needs to take special care when hiring guards for their home and property. As a result, they created Zephotification. And he steps away from the door and you can see that at the center of the guardhouse, there is a large stone bath filled with bubbling green liquid. Uh, let's show him, Masterson. And they do. The two men step into the pool of green liquid from either end and they appear to slide into each other. Their clothes and bodies intermingle and solidify until at last the now two-headed combination of Wes and Masterson says, Twice as strong with all the skill of both participants. The only problem is you share one body. So if you're paired with an asshole, it can be kind of a contest of wills as to what gets what done. Oh, dear. You're telling me, says Dave's dad. No, I'm telling them, says Wes. You'd be joined at the start of your shift, and then you'll be separated using this pool at the end of your shift. Pay is three coppers a day plus dinner. So what do you think? Are you interested? What's the uh, bathroom situation when you get say five five? <laughs> it's a nightmare. How many of each thing? It's a nightmare, son. Let me tell you, it is a nightmare. All right, so I get that you know you have the strength of two people now, but like before you did the zephotification, you had just two people. The strength of two people. So you still had the strength, and you had more arms. I just, I don't, I'm, I mean, I think it's cool and all. Don't get me wrong. I'm just curious what the advantage is. I don't understand. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm starting to understand the party needs to split apart thing. Mm -hmm. Oh, so maybe like we can, well, let's not talk about it here. <laughs> I, anyway, okay. We're going to mull it over. We're going to come back. I feel like our weapony people should do that. People who like weapons a lot. Are you talking about me? It's funny because... Because <laughs> I'm a champion of uh, Blunderbuss. It's funny because, I mean, I do have weapons, but I tend to use spells. And <laughs> the only other person who actually uses any sort of combat uh, uses his fists. Claude, do you, do you use weapons? Not that often. He has that stick. I Essentially, yes. does <laughs> have a stick. He's like the Donatello, basically. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's rough. <laughs> I feel like you could find a stick once you're there. You know, like, especially if we're cleaning shit up, he's probably going to have a broom or something. I do have talons as well. And unarmed strikes. You you use those all the time. Yeah, yeah. I would feel really bad with nobody say fortified after Eli went to all the trouble of coming up with that <laughs> I idea. I know, right? Well, and it sounds like we've been provided with green liquid that can split us once we get into the castle. So, like... We could Zaphod here, sneak in, hide. How much liquid is in the little vial? A vial's worth. <laughs> How <laughs> dare you? <laughs> How much is in the stone bath? Is it like full? One plot's worth. <laughs> One vial unit. So just to give <laughs> you guys a heads up, I have planned several routes around this for you. So you don't oh. have to be... Zephods. Like Dave's mom said, you can disguise yourselves and pretend to be servants. There are lots of ways in and around this castle. This is a lot more open than the past arcs have been, so feel free to do whatever meets your fancy. Okay. I feel like he's bluffing and he's trying to get us <laughs> to not to Zephodify. <laughs> <laughs> Snedrick. He's just hurt about it, yeah. As the only other party member with a brain, I have a problem <laughs> with this because do we work together as in each one of us gets one of the idiots <laughs> or do we trust them to do, get anything done? Why are you only talking to one of us right now? I don't understand what's happening. I feel like if we can just limit the, the screwing up to just one dude, you know, one body, 
one way or the other, we're out ahead. And, and, and like, you know, if half of it got turned into a falcon, that'd be pretty fucking cool. <laughs> uh, that would be pretty hilarious. That's true. What, what would happen? Yeah, right. Exactly. Exactly. Two arms and one wing, two wings and one arm. We don't even know. Also, because I don't use weapons, I should go the don't need a weapon route, right? And because really all of the most effective things that Dave can do are also non-weapon related, I feel like we should all just go that route. Let's go the non-weapon route. I have a blunderbuss. You mean that's the kitchen route, right? Yeah. Okay, let's do it. Well, now the question is, are there more than just these two things? Should we stay a day and research around? See if Eli comes up with a better idea. <laughs> yeah, maybe go to like the tavern or something. And There's no tavern. <laughs> it's just a series of mud huts. There's, there's a mud hut. No fucking yeah. tavern in this fucking town. <laughs> this is a tavern. This plot's super open. You can do whatever you want. There's no fucking taverns in this town, though. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. I'm sorry. I didn't consider that you guys would want to go to the fucking Olive Garden and ask around. <laughs> well, so wait, when Eli said he he thought of a bunch of ways to get through this castle, what he actually meant was two. two. It starts with these two. It's, there's there's two. two ways to get to the castle. <laughs> I feel like there was a third way, and then he well, just shot down to our cake. And you, know. you can cake it. I'll fucking fake it while you guys try to cake it in there. I got maps. Cake, cake it till, till you, you make cake it. it. Yep. I say, I say we disguise ourselves as chefs. I feel like okay. our our band, we do look like the back of the house of a restaurant a lot, <laughs> to be fair. Right, right. I mean, I don't look like a guard. Let's be honest. <laughs> uh, no, you don't. Okay. Let's do, let's go go mum's route. Mummy pig farts or whatever her name is. <laughs> yeah, pig shit. Pig shit. All right. So you you politely decline the offer to be guards at the castle, and you head back to the house where Dave's mom is getting ready for work, and she says, "Oh, did you uh you all decided to uh come be my new assistants in the kitchens? I hear. Aye. And by here I mean the dungeon master told me." <laughs> <laughs> Did you just look at a camera? What's Who's happening? The dungeon master. <laughs> what were you just looking at? <laughs> wink. Why are there only three walls in here? Did you wink? Did you say <laughs> wink? Sign up for my OnlyFans. <laughs> what? <laughs> How did you become more interested after you found out your mother had an OnlyFans date? <laughs> look, look, come on. Look at look at my look at my mom. Come on. <laughs> Supportive. That's what a supportive son says. Thank and you, does. mom. When love you. you. Open, love you. Love you. But in a normal amount. The right amount. A chill, <laughs> cool amount. This is appropriate. Love you. I don't like where any of this is going. I just feel like maybe... Comedy <laughs> podcast amount. You have to imagine that the trophies are in the background. Eli, like, would you like an off-ramp? I can offer you an off-ramp. <laughs> Please, thank you very much. I, I think we might want to go back and get Zorgotted or whatever. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Dad, we are in competition right now. Just so you know. Jesus. I'm at work. I can't hear you. <laughs> I'm inside another guy's... Tell the dungeon master to tell you what I said. <laughs> He's all Zayfodded. Maybe Dave and his mom should Zayfod and yeah. What's a dungeon master? <laughs> you can sign up for my OnlyFans and find out. <laughs> telling you. Okay. Does it count? <laughs> Do I get a point? <laughs> a point? A point. What's a dungeon master? Oh, yeah, for the... Uh, Considering how awesome Eli's joke was, I mean, he has to keep it. So, yes, you. obviously, <laughs> obviously you get a point. You absolutely get a point. Keep all my good ones. So, yeah, if you're going to come with me, we'll, of course, enter through the kitchens. Now, servants are allowed anywhere in the palace. That's the good news. The bad news is several fold. The first is you all have to put down all your weapons and armor and magical stuff. Right, because you need to look like servants, Ooh. and if you walk in, I feel like I can carry the bun bun of soothing. No, I mean, I, I it's guess it's a bunny. You're a servant. Why would you have a bun bun of soothing in case there were kids? It's his bun bun of so right, but we're like serfs. We're serfs, so like, why would we have a bun bun for anxiety attacks? You know what? Keep the keep the bun bun of Xanax if you want to keep the bun bun. <laughs> My, what I'm saying is, if you're seen with anything that's very obviously not the possession of someone who works as a servant in a castle, 
that would be a big problem for us. Plus, since you won't be Zephoded, you will have to disguise yourselves, and the guards are specifically looking for you, so you're going to have to come up with some pretty impressive ways of disguising yourselves. I'll go as a cake. Okay. <laughs> as a cake. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm not going to shave the mustache. I feel like we could just get, couldn't we just have Claw talk about boring shit? Mm-hmm. Isn't that, doesn't, wouldn't that just get us through? Could I grow a beard? I mean, how fast can you grow a beard? I don't know how, how fast do, how fast do dwarves grow how beards? How fast? Oh my God, you just grew a beard. That's amazing. Do dwarven nice. beards. I have a bunch of like stolen shit that I'm pretty sure I can disguise myself and get in. I also have a disguise self literal spell. So, Oh, hey. I might do that. You're going to need it because there's... Inch or two a day. The what? It's an inch or two a day. That's a lot. Oh, so I could just not shave for a day and then I'll have like an inch long beard. An yeah, inch a day is pretty like you could not shave for a couple hours and have a beard that's a little short, but yeah. a beard. I've got stubble already. Look at this. And I mean, she's clearly on the two inch side of that inch or two metric. Yeah, no, I mean, if you think walking into a castle where they're expecting exactly you as a person with a beard would be enough to... Fool the guards. I mean, I feel like I look very different right okay, now. Well this then, journey has changed This is us. wild. <laughs> My <laughs> shin's a little itchy. You could shave the stash also on the other side of this Absolutely point. fucking not get out of here. I'm just saying it would be a lot easier to just shave the stash. It would grow back in like two days. No, it's magical. All right. It is magical. It'll probably grow back faster then. Is it magical? Yeah, it's magical. I... What magic do you do with that? It's like a plane. I put it in the machine. Remember when we got drunk at the... Do I remember when we got drunk? Okay. <laughs> okay, Bridget. <laughs> at the... Uh, what was it? The casino. It was Gary's remember casino. Gary's I mean, casino? The Dungeon Master told me. <laughs> 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 We're close. I, uh, well, hey, maybe you could, hey. since you're, you're so fond of this Dungeon Master, maybe you could suggest some ways of us uh, blending in. I think Dave's disguise spell. I do. It's just I can only do it. I can only do it to myself. But it lasts an hour, and I can I can have all my stuff. I can have my armor, my clothing, my weapons, and uh, all of the belongings on my person. And I look different until the spell ends. And and while you were doing that, you could be wheeling in a barrel. Sure. <laughs> I don't know why I would you. need the barrel, but yeah, I could do that. I can, I can <laughs> also look a the... foot shorter or taller. I can appear thin or thick or anywhere in honey, between. There's a lot of honey. stuff I can do. Honey, we get it. You can disguise yourself. <laughs> <laughs> it's ba I have the basic same, you know, arrangement of limbs. I can't like Zephotify mm. exactly. Sure. Yeah, he could push Snedrick in a barrel. I've got like a robe and a wig and Morbo's hat. And just be like boringness talk. He's got the boringness talk. Yeah, and I've got the boringness talk. Oh, you've got a you've got a special what do you have? It doesn't matter. You don't oh, need to Oh, oh, the dungeon master suddenly doesn't know what he has. <laughs> oh no, I was just having you reiterated, maybe perhaps. <laughs> nope, never mind. Mom, are you omniscient? No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> no. I've always thought you were kind of omniscient. That's the kind of tracks. I love you. Well, so I, I'm you. thinking I have enough kind of like Normal items amount. to just Disguise myself. <laughs> I mean, you've gotten like a lot of clothing items. I think you got a wig at some point. Yeah, sure. I've got Murloc's hat and pipe and I've got a yeah. robe and... I feel like Murloc might recognize this hat. Yeah, he might. Yep. Mm -hmm. But he's not going to be in the kitchens. Well, he might be since we sent him there. We're not going to stay in the kitchen either. True. Ooh, you know what? You know what's really entertaining is listening to us work this out. I know. I'm. <laughs> Let's just head over there. We'll figure it out when we get there. You guys want to go to the tavern? To Olive Garden? <laughs> <laughs> I'm hungry. <laughs> Unlimited breadsticks. Okay, fine. I'll shave my fucking stash off. All right, but so even if you shave your mustache, how am I getting? You know, that's, that's a good point. So really, there's only one fucking way to get into this thing. All right. No, there's two. There's multiple ways to get in. <laughs> Super easy. <laughs> You're literally wizards with magic powers. <laughs> it's not a 7-Eleven run. <laughs> Does anybody else have any sort of spell that might relate to this? Anybody? I have fog. I could just make it really foggy. <laughs> 
<laughs> Pug cloud. I could get Carl the Pug a bag of corn to help. Oh, let's let's see how big it can be. I feel like the guards are just going to be like that. That big cloud of fog is probably <laughs> bad guys. <laughs> well, right, but when but when they came in to attack us, there would just be a bunch of cartoon sounds, some stars, and then they would pop out. All right. beat up. That's true. <laughs> that is kind of... Can we do that? That's what they say. So we could just march in the fucking gates. <laughs> is it cartoon <laughs> rules of fog? To be clear, for the purposes of our game, you don't need a spell to disguise yourself. You can shave your mustache or put on a mask or put on a wig the way Claw's doing. That's fine. People will just make an investigation check when they see you. Okay. I have like... Pass without trace, but I think it's just me. Nobody has invisibility? No. I mean, I do, but I think it's just self. Yeah, I have disguise self now. Check that uh, spell description. <laughs> For disguise self? No, pass without a trace. Oh, okay. A veil of shadows and silence radiates from you, masking you and your companions from detection. And companions? Yeah, but like... I think it's just the same as the fog thing. Like, well, is this, wait, wait, wait. There's not fog. Is this the thing that, where you have to talk about something boring? Yes. Did we, we literally we use that. this. <laughs> We've used this one before. To get, to get by guards. guards. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, but we said this earlier. Did, I thought somebody shot this down earlier, just like minutes ago. I, I suggested it. I thought somebody shot it down. Okay. okay. Do you want to talk about Canadian politics and get us through? I feel like you that's can do a, it. That's a, that's a different one. That's, uh, I'm shaving my mustache. Yeah, while but I feel like Canadian on. politics is dual purpose. I feel like it's both. Yeah, Thank it you. Yeah, it could be used both. Yeah. <laughs> talk about the ridings and whatever the fuck. Nobody cares. You guys are the 51st state called Canada. It's fine. <laughs> no, I put together a list of boring stuff for when we needed it. I'm still going to put my wig on and my blue dwarven robes. It was so hard not to make a really mean joke when you said that, Morgan. <laughs> When I said what? That you had been putting a, get together a list of boring stuff for when we need it. <laughs> um, I, didn't say, I, didn't, I didn't make it, though. So, I, I'm a, I so you get the points. It's true. <laughs> I also, I picked out a topic for, like, each of you to bore us with in case. Ooh. So here's yeah. the difference between Pro Tools and Audacity, if you really want to get down to it. <laughs> the dragging tool is actually oh, a lot my easier. son! Where did my son go? He's disappeared forever! <laughs> <laughs> oh, God! My boy! My boy! <laughs> 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 okay, do we want to try and do the boredom thing? I say we still kind of dress up in case it fails. I mean, I have a disguise self spell now. Sure. That gives me an hour. Bridget, do you have a disguise self spell by any chance that popped up recently? She's going to do the mustache. She shaved her mustache. I already shaved Beatrice off. Yep. All right. Well, she's already uh, growing back. She's like a twelfth yeah, right, of an inch right, back in the last two there. hours. We should go quick. I missed her so bad. I missed <laughs> you so bad, Beatrice. You should summon Carl to like just hang out on Bridget's lip until the mustache <laughs> grows back. I'd like to summon Carl the Pug of Pickerhorn. All right. The <laughs> chain on your wrist glows gold. Jesus. And Carl the Pug of Pickerhorn appears. Hey, what's going on, everybody? Oh, look. It's uh, Dave's mom. Hey, hey, Mrs. Uh, Pig Shit. Well, hello, Carl. How are you? I'm okay. I'm okay. How do you know my mom already? I, I, a, I follow her on OnlyFans. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me too. So, um, Wait. Oh, Jesus. Can, can you help us with, uh, well, I guess to start, as a joke, I summoned you because somebody suggested you be... The mustache for now on Bridget over there, but can you like help us sneak into like a castle? We're doing like some some sneaky stuff. Sure. What it was? The, what's the plan? All right, I'm I'm preparing blindness just in case, so Ooh. I can make people go blind. That seems like a useful spell. Seems like overkill, but yeah, okay, all right. <laughs> all right. So what's the plan? You guys are gonna you guys are gonna sneak into the castle and and steal the uh, what's it call it the sunstone. Yeah, 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 exactly. So the bird can do like this thing where he talks about boring shit and nobody can see us all and we get past him. All right. So we're going to try to do that. That sounds like a great plan. All right, let's do it. Nice. So you don't need to come to the kitchens with me then? I mean, we could. I'd like just to get something to eat. I feel like yeah, yeah, yeah. there'd be snacks. I might as well also get the costume so, you know, people think we're just, you know, well, and I think if we're doing the pass of the trace, we're going through the kitchens first, right? Aye. Yeah. Is there like a shift meal? A uh, family meal? Yeah. Oh, for oh, hell yeah. Oh, it's a family meal? Yeah, I mean, it's mostly... You can't just order specific menu items? No, we don't do that. They do like a big 
All right, let's just go. Everyone just sort of eats the potatoes, you know? Yeah, I figured. Like, there's okay. like, it's a bunch of sides. Sounds bad. We all just have to stand around staring at each other. I hate like the sides. And everyone calls it family meal and you're like, what family has just potatoes and sides? That's crazy. Also, like, I don't know that guy's name. Why would you make me call this? Fa- Anyways. That's weird. So, yeah, you, you guys want to come to the kitchens? Yep, sure. All right. Weird that you wouldn't know your coworkers, but all right. Why would you <laughs> know your, all the people who work at a restaurant? That's insane. It's terrifying. You don't want to know those people. Thank you, <laughs> son. It's <laughs> <laughs> important. Off to the Gazel Kitchens we go. Everybody, just popping in real quick to thank you once again for listening to the show. We love making it as much as you love hearing it. Let's see. Couple things before I let you get back to the show. If you're enjoying the show and you'd like to support us, why not head over to patreon.com forward slash D and D minus and give us as little as a dollar a show. There's cool behind the scene extras as well as in the higher levels. You could do things like contribute to the episodes. Our Dungeon Master patrons have done NPCs and items and weapons and all sorts of cool stuff have been contributed. So you can check all that out at patreon.com forward slash D and D minus. And if you don't have money that you'd like to give us, why not head over to wherever you rate your podcast, right? As a nice little five-star review that makes more people find out about the show. It puts us up in the rankings and it sends me a nice little email whenever you write a review of the show. I know you've been meaning to, so just take a second. Stop. If you're driving, do it while you're driving. I'm kidding. Don't do it while you're driving, but pull over to the side of the road, pull across the median of the road Give us a five-star review wherever you watch your podcast, and then you can back to your drive. All right. I think that's it for this month, and we'll see you all the first Friday after the first Wednesday of next month. Thanks so much. Bye. So Dave's mom walks you to the servant's entrance of the castle and through the back doors to a giant kitchen where servants mill about, not really paying attention, preparing what is going to be obviously a pretty sizable feast for the guards as well as the Darkmoor family that lives in the castle. All right, boring it up, man. Yeah, I... Do we get that uh, family meal? You said something about a family meal? Yeah, well, that's pretty bad podcasting if we all just stand around and eat potatoes. (laughs) Well, I'm going to have some. It's right here. This is it. I'm having okay, some. Okay, great. We can go ahead. So Dave is eating sides. He's eating fucking <laughs> asparagus spears. She also reaches into like a closet that's in this room or there's a there's a series of racks on the wall and she pulls down several like gray sackcloth outfits and sort of sizes you up and sees. Now, these are the official robes of the servants who work in the castle. If you want to pass your inspection as a servant, you need to drop all of your weapons and armor here. Can I keep my Reeboks? I mean, you could try. The more non-servant shit you have on you, the harder (laughs) it is to seem like a servant. It's fair. Well, if I keep my scale mail underneath it. Sure. Yeah, as long as no one looks too closely at you. They shouldn't anyway. Sure. You can try. I'll leave my crossbow and my battle axe. If I have any weapons, I'm literally unaware of them. (laughs) (laughs) You have a magic dagger that is cursed. <laughs> okay. You'd probably have to leave the wand, though, wouldn't you? Oh, yeah. I'd have to. How good are you guys at you know keeping everything on lockdown while we're gone? The lockers in the back of the house of a restaurant? This is not a good idea. <laughs> yeah, it's a great <laughs> idea. Don't worry. Everything's going to be fucking great. <laughs> I feel like, well, I just, because I feel like the other option is to go back to Dave's house now and drop <laughs> off all our stuff. Or just put it. Put it in your cleavage. What's wrong with you? We could just try and take everything. What? Yeah, we like you're saying, we could just try and take a bunch of stuff with us and and fail our We're gonna we're gonna get invisible when we need to, right? Yeah, and we could try and find a hiding place in the castle. I feel like Dave might know one. I dear God. Okay. Yeah, Dave knows the castle pretty well, right? Does he? Yep, totally. No, I guess he wouldn't. Because he certainly Grew up knowing he was related to the Dark Most. No, the dungeon master told me about it. <laughs> <laughs> he was his servant. Well, you were a servant growing up? No, he's just a kid here. Okay. Shine out at the Olive Garden. There is a good deal of child's labor here, but I was actually not one. <laughs> <laughs> it's 
too bad. Why are you adding child slavery into our comedy <laughs> podcast? You always do this, Dave. Thank you. Always you. add child slavery. Into I didn't <laughs> add it. It happened. It's not. It's mm, me making it up. <laughs> I know. I know. The character speaks through you. God. <laughs> <laughs> Method actors. So you're in a bustling kitchen. She's given you these robes. So you're dressed as servants. I will tell you, no one here gives a fuck about you, right? You are you are under the protection of Dave's mom. She has introduced you as like new servants to the castle. Everyone else is just trying to get through their day. There's two bus boys who keep like making very obvious Coke gestures at each other and trying to sneak <laughs> off into the walk-in <laughs> freezer. So, you know, no, no one's interested in you, at least in this room. Why are the bus boys in the kitchen? Because they're done busting. They they bringing the dishes. That's yeah, where, and family wouldn't, meal. Wouldn't they bring it to the dish spot, but not That's the kitchen. That's where the dish the dishes are in the kitchen. Here. Dishes are in the kitchen. Generally speaking, I feel like Heath would know this. Not the us, dish pit but... is a part of. Hey, no, I'm saying I think Heath's right, not us. What? Hey, didn't Heath work in a restaurant? I did. I've, I've worked, worked in, in a lot of restaurants. We've all worked in restaurants. Oh, okay. The yeah. sinks in the fucking kitchen. Do you think there's not sinks in the kitchen? So, well, sometimes there's a... I'm the only one that's never worked in a restaurant. I probably. worked in a chocolate factory. There's generally a dish area that's decidedly <laughs> separate from, like, the kitchen line. Sometimes the dish pit is a separate room, but it's very often part of the... And I feel like in, you know, medieval castle... <laughs> Even if it has a walk-in freezer, I feel like it was probably, it's probably very unlikely that they have it separated out. I don't know what you're talking about, freezers, but we we only saw the one refrigerator. Yeah, but now they're everywhere. Oh, yeah. Those have gone... <laughs> also, you don't have to do signals in the back of the house for cocaine. You can just be like, let's do cocaine together now. <laughs> I it's the back of the house. <laughs> and everybody's like, yes, let's do that. That's great. <laughs> He's right, Morty. Why do we do these signals to each other? <laughs> I don't know, Moishi. It made me feel alive. Let's go do cocaine. <laughs> I chose these voices because if you think about it, it's a very good idea to give the bus boys these voices. Lechayim, they say as they go to do cocaine in the back. <laughs> All right. I feel like we should start heading in the direction that we generally speaking think maybe the sunstone is. Yeah. In. So, mom, do you, where is the squiggly guy? Do you know where he is in the castle? Well, honey, I'm glad you've asked. He's been mostly staying in the high tower all the way at the top of the castle through all. Would you say it's an hour away? What? Would you what? say it's about an hour's <laughs> walk away? How many parsecs is it? Because we, we have about an hour of a spell. <laughs> I don't know how many hours it's going to take you to get upstairs. Okay, hope it's one. Well, like, you've probably been there. Yeah, it doesn't take me an hour to get up there. I'll tell All you right, that. well, then, then we're good. You. That's what he was All right. <laughs> you guys feel that that's a crazy question, right? I'm not the crazy one. If I was Let's like, just make this more simple. How long would it take you to walk up there? <laughs> Twelve minutes. Great. All right. That was the original question. That was very specific. And which servants tend to go up there? Oh, any servant is allowed anywhere in the castle. Okay. Yeah. As long as you're wearing those gray robes, no one will notice. Now, Seems like a policy that's going to backfire. You'll have to pass by the guards, as you do, and the guards will, of course, inspect you. That's why they're guards. Well, except for we'll be invisible for a full hour because I'll be talking about something boring. Theoretically. Theoretically. Unless it gets real interesting. And so just a description of sort of the exits to this room. There is a back door that seems sort of like smaller. And then there are two large doors that you see servers going in and out of. And through those doors, you can see a great dining hall. There's a head table that two people appear to be eating at. You can't quite make out their forms. And then at the front of the room on the south side of the castle, there's a bunch of these Zaphod guards sitting and eating their free dinner. Is Dave's dad on duty right now? You assume so, yes. Because he got Zayfodded. Yeah, when you left him, he was Zayfodded and headed into his ship. Right. Okay. All right. You ready? All right. Let's do this. Where are you going? To the tower. So uh, to the, tower. the top of the castle. And I guess the plan is if, if we encounter anybody that is a problem, we just, Claw, you're going to make us invisible. I, I feel like he just starts making us invisible now. Now. And mm -hmm. then we go up. I, we, I feel like we save, we save the time just in case. Uh, so which, which way to the, that tower that you were talking about? Well, if you wanted to get to the highest tower, the one where the squiggly guy has been, you're going to want to go through the great hall, past all the guards, into the main hallway, up the stairs to the second floor. Then 
on the side of the Lord's bedroom, inside a secret chamber, is the door to the spiral staircase that'll lead you up to the high tower. That's where he keeps all of his powerful magic and astronomy stuff and, you know, like telescopes and shit. And also the squiggly guy? That's where the squiggly guy has been, yeah. It seems like he's having an affair with the squiggly guy in like 1945 in like a weird house architecture situation. <laughs> like fences. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. Hey, guys, I'm so sorry to interrupt our podcast, but I actually have to shift over right now and do an entire reading of fences. <laughs> yeah. But it's between Murloc gnomes <laughs> and uh, Crest Darkmoor. I hope you guys understand. It's going to be like 12 episodes. I fully understand. It's a long play and we don't have the rights. So it's also, (laughs) I think we're going to lose some people, but I think we'll come out the other side (laughs) offending a lot of people. (laughs) It'll just be you for 12 episodes. Yeah. (laughs) Fine by me. You guys can sneak around in the background, right? We could. My job's not to like you. You see that roof over your head? You feel that food in your belly? All right, all right. Well, that's enough of that. <laughs> so my boredom thing is I'm going to do fences. <laughs> so Doesn't great- work. It fails because it's a great play. Very interesting. It's it- <laughs> too interesting. The most interesting they play. They see us more now. Yeah. <laughs> but shouldn't we be on their side because they're also doing fences? Won't they be like, hey, you guys are doing fences That's how too. you win Murloc Gnomes <laughs> over. My God. He's the production of fences brings you guys together <laughs> <laughs> closer than you ever thought possible. Okay, so mom, you said all the guards are in the Great Hall. That's like right away. Not all the guards, but the, most of the guards right now are eating their free meal in the Great Hall. That's through those double doors in front of you. Oh, they get the family meal too. And of course, it, it looks, and she sort of peeks through the door and it says, oh, it, it looks like Lord Cress and his squiggly friend are in there as well. Oh, all right, let's go. Well, let's go to the Great Hall. Let's get invisible first. Actually, wait, wait, wait. Let's try to sneak past them into that chamber. Yeah, let's get invisible right now. Yep. Hi. Start talking Claw, about uh, your, your, your workout. My workout? It's leg day. Let's hear it. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> My boring topic is the different Star Wars canons, like the expanded universe. Okay, and the film go for canon it. Actually, I find that. Oh, God, I hate this so much. And the different encyclopedias and all that kind of stuff. Okay, do it. I just did it. You just did it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I was told I wouldn't have Our to. audience <laughs> is immediately writing into Patreon right now being like, I would have liked to hear just a yeah. little bit about the Star Wars. <laughs> Cold open. I want to hear about We pan them. onto Taggart International Train Company. About Joris Kaboth and Dark Empire <laughs> and yeah. Dagny Taggart is the vice president. It's a train company. I will say... Keith did say the word hutties in a recent episode, so I... I said the word hutties. No, no, he said it. You said something that was not hutties. I remember very specifically. Okay, fine. And Heath nailed it. Heath knew what the language of the huts was, and I want to know why he knows that. That's for a different episode. (laughs) (laughs) I know things about the things I hate. I actually know more about the things I hate than the things I don't hate. I I, I think you underestimate how boring a question that is, Morgan. I think that's perfect for the circumstances. Yeah, Yeah. nailed it. (laughs) All right, read read that spell description for us, Morgan. A veil of shadows and silence radiates from you, masking you and your companions from detection. For the duration, which is a concentration spell up to one hour, each creature you choose within 30 feet of you, including you, has a plus 10 bonus to dexterity or stealth checks and can't be tracked except by magical means. Okay. All right. So you are going to sneak through this hall. I will tell you, as you approach the doors, with their backs to you, Murloc Gnomes, who you notice to your satisfaction is all bandaged up and covered in like splints and casts and stuff from your fight with him, sits with Lord Cress, a young, angry looking dragonborn, and they're sort of speaking in whispers to each other. The rest of the hall, surprisingly, is empty. It seems like maybe at one point there were like balls or, you know, great feasts held here, but it has lain fallow for a long enough time that pretty much every table except the head table and where the guards are at the back is sort of covered in dust. So as you sneak through the doors, which you want to do behind Lord Cress and Murloc Gnomes, everybody roll a stealth check for me. And we get plus we get plus 10. Oh, yeah, we get plus 10. So 17 plus 10. 
I'm looking. That's a what? That's 27. <laughs> oh, fuck. That's a 22. <laughs> 10. No, 12. that wasn't a 22. That's a 12. <laughs> Dave, did you just roll a two? Yep. No, I rolled a 12. I, I got a 28. All right. So the three of you gently pass like unseen shadows <laughs> through the doors, except for Dave. Who comes <laughs> slamming through the double doors? I drop and, my trophy collection on the floor. Right, and la- <laughs> drops a tray full of glass figurines. <laughs> I flip over all their roll-ups just to be. Oh, a dick. thank God you have you have the face thing on, right? Mm-hmm. The what? <laughs> yeah, you have the disguised disguise. self. You've disguised self. I didn't do that yet, but I could if if I need to. <laughs> Dave, rewind. <laughs> I think you need to. You did disguise self. <laughs> At any moment, I could disguise self. Hey, hey, uh, wait, 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 wait. Hey, Dave. You, they, hey, you Keith, have. Keith, I, you know, I hate to like railroad or this kind of thing, but um, <laughs> if someone's face you know changes into a person you don't know while you're looking at them with your eyes, <laughs> the disguising effect is slightly ameliorated. Also, also, I feel remember like a lot of people a, are just going to be quiet about that because they're going to be embarrassed. There's literally posters of you all over town. Like, mm-hmm. they, there's a reward out for you. It's And that makes it even better. It's a social contract. You have to, like, be sure or else you're the guy who, <laughs> oh like, my God. says there are aliens. I saw them. But, like, you don't generally. Um, okay. We could just turn you in and get the money and come get you later. I feel that <clears throat> that idea is getting better and better. I mean, I bet half the kitchen staff is doing that already. <laughs> Don't I have a sackcloth like cloak over my face anyway? No. No, man, you just fell. I'm ducking. Everyone in the room is looking at you. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, you had put on that mask earlier, though. Oh, Jesus. Or this would be problematic. No, he keeps insisting to us that he didn't. <laughs> Can I try and boredom talk them again and try and divert their attention no, to me? No, that was the stealth roll. That was what that was. I start <sighs> dancing out. Okay. I dance myself <laughs> off. <laughs> I'm going to wait. I'm going to cast fog. No, make a performance check. One thing at a time. Okay. Performance <laughs> check. Nice. That's make a performance that. check. <laughs> Claw, do I get plus 10 on this? No. It's not a dexterity performance? What if I'm trying... If it was my choice, you would, but it's not my choice. Is it? Is it dexterity? Is it a dexterity skill? It's, it's charisma. charisma. It's charisma. I'm trying a dexterity performance. Why? You can't do a dexterity. You've got you to roll performance, buddy. It's down there. 16. That's a, that's a 16. So I'll, t- I'll tell you what happens. You come crashing through the door. You <laughs> splash a big tray. Everyone stares at you. You do a cool kip up, and then you <laughs> moonwalk back through the door. <laughs> But Claw, Bridget, and Snedrick, you are now in the hall, sort of mixing among the servants who are serving people undetected. Dave, you are back in the kitchen, <laughs> fucking grooving. With your mom. I failed, mom. <laughs> I like to cast disguise self. All right. <laughs> Come back through the doors. Who the fuck was that asshole? Am I right? <laughs> She's like, I fall down. <laughs> You guys see that fucking guy who can't dance and looked like the guy that is a bounty on his head? We we made him leave. (laughs) I'm different. Yep. Hello. Okay. Today. So you walk through Murloc and and, uh, Cress barely pay any attention to you because they're very involved in their conversation and you're all in the great (laughs) hall. So quick description of this room. Like I said, there's the head table where Murloc and Cress are. Then there's a long table at the south end of the room where all the Zaphods are eating. In between that, there's these dusty tables that haven't been used for a while. And along the west side of the wall, there's a giant fireplace that sort of warms the place. On the east side of the wall, there's a double doors and you don't know where that leads. And then on the south side, past the guards, there appear to be like these portholes that lead into kind of like a mud room where the guards like take off their garb and stuff when they're done guarding and come in for their food. Didn't Heath's mom just tell us how to get there? Yeah, yeah we're just going to follow where's, the direct. The, whatever the she said, we do that. That <laughs> okay. goes to the next. I mean, I appreciate that you've got a map for this and, and everything you want to get your money's <laughs> worth out of it. But yeah, I mean, you guys are going to have to remember what she said. So which doors no, do you go no, through? Fucking... No, oh, just... Jesus. <laughs> no. Just gonna... Nope. Refuse. We'll stop the episode <laughs> yeah, here. D&D. I'll print it. Uh, uh, we'll figure it out later. Characters <laughs> go on strike. <laughs> <laughs>
Can we get the steno to read that back to us really quick? <laughs> she actually didn't give you super specific directions. She just told you. She said there was a, we were supposed to go through his bedroom. But that's all she told you. That was the last step. Yeah. Yeah. And off to the side of the bedroom, there's a. Wait, wait, wait. But the bedroom is up. A... Bedroom's on the second floor. She said straight through. Exactly. Straight through the main hall. Yeah. She said straight through the main hall. And then we're in a hallway. We go left. And then there's a bedroom and we go in the room in the bedroom that has stairs that lead you into the tower. Oh, I thought we had to, well, I thought we had to go to the second floor where the bedroom was and then right to the left of the thing. I'm not saying that I have all of the directions. I'm okay. saying that all of those directions were in. There. Yeah, we go to the second floor to the bedroom, if I remember correctly. And then off to the side of the bedroom, there's another chamber that has the stairs to this other place. Did you mention that there were stairs in here? There are no stairs in this room, no. Okay, then I think straight through the main hall. I do remember her yeah. saying that. Oh, uh, maybe the yeah. bedroom's on this floor and I have that wrong. Yeah. So which you you use directions for all the to describe this lovely room. Which direction, <laughs> which wall are we on? Which room So you're on the north wall right now. North. Okay. The south wall has portholes that lead to a kind of muck room or mud room, depending on where you're from, where the guards have taken off their shields and weapons. And it's stuff. a mud room. A mud room, yeah to like get ready for dinner. And then on the east side, there's double doors that lead to more of the indoors of the castle, you assume, because they're like wooden indoor doors, but you don't know where they lead because they're closed. I would assume that we go there and not the mudroom, right? Yeah, yeah, that's the only way to go, yeah. I mean, other than the mudroom. Well, but yeah, but we're not going to go to the mudroom, right? Okay, let's go there. All right, you step through the doors. Everybody, roll another stealth check for me. Oh, boy. Is this a shoes off castle or a shoes off? <laughs> <laughs> I rolled a 32 with 32. Fuck, fuck. I rolled a three. 23. 26. A 13. And a 17. All right. So you step into this hallway. This is like a very lush hallway with deep red carpet running along it. Straight in front of you, there's an open doorway with no door in it that leads into what you can see is sort of like a pseudo throne room. Obviously, the Darkmoors aren't like kings, but they have to see peasants and people who come with complaints and stuff. And so you can sort of see the benches and seating of an abandoned throne room directly in front of you. On the left side of you, so towards the north, there's a large set of stairs, but there are two Zaphods standing at its base and they can see you because of how you rolled. They can see all of us. Can't see me. They can see Dave and Bridget, and they're they're paying less attention to Claw and Snedrick, but you're not like invisible. So they're aware you're there. They're just not suspicious of it. Like Bridget and Dave walked through in a manner that caused them to pay some attention. They don't care, right? Because you're dressed as servants and they I'm disguised as a servant that they know. Right, exactly. They're not interested in you, but in order to get past them, you'd have to like talk to them. You couldn't just like mosey on by them. Where is Carl the Pug of Pegacorn this whole time? I think Carl disappeared after he agreed with you. Like he went back to. We'll the... go ahead and say he disappeared. And that yeah, you because I'll tell you, he was... you all failed your stealth checks if you had a floating <laughs> Pug of Pegacorn next to you. <laughs> I don't care what the fuck you rolled. Wait, 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 wait. What if he also got into the servant? He's in a little gray robe, and they're like, <laughs> "Don't stare." I think it's really cool that they hired a tiny floating guy. I think that's actually really cool. Also carrying a little tray. Of garlic bread. Yeah. <laughs> I would have gotten this through, actually. Yeah. For himself, though. Head, it's canon. Hey, it's head canon now. Garlic bread. Garlic bread. <laughs> garlic bread. Anybody garlic bread? <laughs> Bruschette. <laughs> Bruschetta. The guards are at the bottom of a set of stairs, he said. A set of stairs. She said something about the throne room. Maybe it was toward the throne room. Hey, guys, we're, ju we're just uh, going to fix up the room for the uh, squiggly guy that's uh, up behind you. Oh, you're going to try and approach the guards and Jesus, talk to them. Jesus, with that. You just told fuck. us we had to talk to them. No, if we want to no. pass them. If you want to pass by them, you have to talk. To them. We could go into the throne room and literally just take another pass at this room. To be fair, Dave's got good charisma. He could probably. Thank you. Does he? Yeah. He's all disguised. Has it ever worked for us before? Canonically. It's mathematically a fact that I do. Bridget. <laughs> well, until you roll the one. <laughs> and then we're all screwed. Well, that'd be a five. So true. I could just make it foggy. I just I also have passive charisma of 18, just naturally. Plus seven or something. I don't know how it works. Well, wait. Hey, Dave. That guy looked like super fucking awesome to you. He does. <laughs> true. 
That servant in particular, I'll tell you two things I know about that guy. I don't recognize him. He looks awesome. <laughs> Wait, is your name Dave too? Jesus, Jesus As long as you don't hey. tell him your name, you should be fine. I didn't hear that. This is in the name of the comedy podcast. I was too busy thinking about how awesome you look. I'm Dave. Oh my God. Cress. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Where are we going? We're going back. back to the uh, yeah, well, <laughs> dance is back through the doors again. <laughs> Quick dance. Uh, I definitely do a dance, but yeah, we should probably go back through that other door. I will dance to that door right now. I I could just make one of them blind. I'm doing the Roger Rabbit, and then we can kick the other one's ass. I mean. I feel like they'll like, they'll probably set, you know, they'll start yelling and stuff. Hey, yeah. You're right. yeah, blinded people tend to get all pissy about it. <laughs> it's not true. Tim's a delight. <laughs> How dare you, Noah? <laughs> Let's go to the throne room and pretend that's where we were going. Yeah, I mean, we could just explore. Yeah. We'd be complete, see if there's any Kurok seeds over sure, this Sure, why not? <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> What's that I am, fucking song? I am going to go to the throne room. There are probably going to be guards in there, though. You know what? Probably have to do another stealth check. Yeah, we'll have to do, whenever we enter any room, we'll probably have to keep and check. And- okay, then how do you suggest we get past these? I could do another dance. You guys can talk for as long as you want, by the way. You don't have to worry about me being like, they're watching and you only have eight seconds. <laughs> Good. They're just, honestly, they're so fucking taken in mm-hmm. by how charismatic and awesome that dude they just saw is. Oh, okay. I feel like they loved my dancing. And I feel like we just should just y- y- lean into that and then walk by them because we have some cleaning to do up there. Yeah. In olden days, a glimpse of stock and was looked on <laughs> <at> something <laughs> shocking. Heaven knows. There- Anything goes. Yeah, but. it's please drop <laughs> that fucking shoe. My I was God. about to say, I'm literally, I'm paralyzed. Whatever you say or do until you drop the anything goes. You just cast a spell on me, Eli. I went deaf. I have no idea Good what happened. Authors too, who wants new better words. You find the sunstone. I don't fucking know. know. <laughs> it's there. Here. You're all level 20. Writing pros, anything goes. Okay, go ahead. Okay. I was wondering if they had like a, I could do a misdirection if there's like a, by any chance, a fountain? Is there a fountain in this hallway? No, there's not a fountain. <laughs> okay, hallway. damn it. All right, never mind. No, but so I want you, I'm glad you feel so comfortable to ask those questions. <laughs> no stupid questions. We could try doing some like minor illusions. Try and exactly. You do a magic show for them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we, we could make a fountain. Performance check. Oh, Does anybody want to choose a card? All right. So I, I want to clarify the stakes here, right? Because mom told us that we that the servants could go anywhere we wanted. Right, that's what my pig shit said. Oh, hey. So shouldn't we just be able to be like, hey, guys, we got to go clean up there. And they would be just like, yeah, man, you're disguised. We're not suspicious of these guys. Oh, that's what I did before I started dancing. And I thought it was going to be a problem. So we danced away. Okay. I danced away. Why, why don't we do that? I would say we have Dave do it because he's got the best Aye. charisma. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. Dave. Dave, you approach the guards. What do you say? Think about what you're going to say. Hey, guys. <laughs> You remember when I said this exact same thing a moment ago and then I danced away and I came right back? <laughs> and then you said your name was Dave. Which... I said my name was Dave. Yeah, Dave Cress, I think. Is what I don't I know if you know was... this, but we're actually looking for a guy named Dave You're right looking for now. a guy named Dave. Is his name yeah. Dave Cress? Because that would be me. It's got to be somebody else, right? No, I don't think so. Well, yeah, obviously I'm a servant here, so I'm allowed to go wherever I want. Um, <laughs> What I'm doing is me and the, maybe some of my friends, you might... Uh, I don't know. doesn't matter. Other servants. Other servants. Others, I'm friends with my coworkers. And we're, we're going to... Uh, Nailing it. You are we're so going to clean. I have a podcast. We're going, <laughs> we're going to clean uh, the room of the squiggly guy who just showed up because he's an honored guest. Um, so uh, is that, that's right behind you up these stairs, as I understand it, right? Uh, just want, I'm kind of new. I just want to make sure I'm getting in the right direction. Yeah, make a persuasion check with disadvantage because that oh, was... Oh, no, with advantage. That was no, awful. with disadvantage because that was did, fucking insane. That was so fucking well. insane. <laughs> that was so That's crazy. That's with he advantage. He did so well. No, it was disadvantage. <laughs> I feel like everybody agrees it was Is advantage. Is there a way for us to help? <laughs> yeah, if you would... Would you like to add? He's new. I... Cool. Nailed it. 
Give him a break. He's getting his feet. We were told to change the sheets. Oh, that's still disadvantage. That's okay. you've made it. If, if anything, uh, if there was double disadvantage, I mean, we don't have any sheets with us, right? So there's not. Sorry, please ignore my friends who walked up and just said hats right behind me. I'm gonna I'm gonna minor illusion some sheets into my hand, like but like pull nice. them out from behind my back and see. But yeah, let's see these sheets. In here and pillowcases. Just take away one of the disadvantages. <laughs> Somebody roll. Oh, I, he's rolling. I, I had it, I hit it a while ago. Oh, okay. <laughs> that's a twenty-four, motherfucker. Natural oh, twenty, yeah. but disadvantage. But disadvantage. You got to roll again. Absolutely not. A nat twenty d- d- beats disadvantage. <laughs> it does not. Beat yes, it does. Advantage. It does not. I check the rules right now. Okay, because it's gonna yep. it's gonna take it me a doesn't... while to roll again. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I can read the entire Dungeon Master's Guide. When you DM, your natural twenty can beat it. That's right. When I DM, we're going back and just changing all of this. <laughs> we're just doing <laughs> we're just doing this particular scene over again. There's gonna be a time machine. I'm gonna fuck up the whole universe. Twenty two, motherfucker. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I mean, I don't know why that guy explained your job all out loud like that to me, but... Uh, yeah, that was weird. I don't know. But yeah, get on up there. Uh, follow the stairs right up behind me. Great. All right. And hey, Dave, Dave Kress? Yeah, what's up? I like the way you look. Me? Ah, oh, thank you. I like the way you look, sir. Gentleman and a scholar. This is the second guard you've hit on. I our, kiss you in back. In our journey. Did you hear me kiss you back? <laughs> yeah, we did a little kissy back and forth. Cool. That's the end of the episode. We're done. <laughs> All right. The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2021. All rights reserved.